Mounjaro versus Ozempic, better known as Terzipatide versus Semaglutide, kind of like King Kong versus Godzilla. Actually, it's not even that close. If you look at the papers and the trials that got these medications FDA approved, on paper, Mounjaro outperforms on every level. I mean, terzipatide versus semaglutide. Terzipatide is better for glucose control. Terzipatide is better for weight loss in the trials that we see. The problem is we don't have enough trials that go head to head. We have one trial that had terzipatide at doses of five milligrams, 10 milligrams, and 15 milligrams, which are pretty high, versus semaglutide at one milligram. Yeah, the five, 10, and 15 milligram doses outperformed semaglutide at one milligram, which is a middle of the way dose at every level. But we would like to see a better, you know, distribution of the semaglutide doses versus a distribution like I just mentioned, five, 10, and 15 milligrams of terzipatide to get a better idea of how they perform head to head. But on paper, what we know now, Manjaro is outperforming. But there's other aspects. There's other reasons why we would choose semaglutide versus the Terzipatide. And let's go over that right now. First thing I'd like to point out is the blood glucose control. 3% about decrease in A1C versus a little over 1.3 to 1.2% in semaglutide. Terzepatide is closer to 3%. But if you're closer to the goal and you don't need such a big decrease in A1C, yeah, you may choose semaglutide to avoid episodes of hypoglycemia. That's one reason why you might choose semaglutide in that case, but most patients don't reside that close to the goal. Most patients at diagnosis, probably closer to nine or 10 hemoglobin A1C. And by the way, if you don't know what a hemoglobin A1C is, think about red blood cells bathing in a pool of sugary water. We put a hundred of those red blood cells in a machine and the machine is counting. How many of these red blood cells still have sugar hanging out on his coat. If 5.7 to 6.4 of those cells have sugar on his coat, we'll call that patient a pre-diabetic. If 6.5 cells or higher have sugar on his coat, we call that patient a diabetic. And this gives us an idea of what the blood sugar in that patient has been over the last 90 days. Why 90 days? If you didn't know, red blood cells live for 90 days before they get turned over. So I can get an idea of what your blood sugar has been like on average day to day for 90 days by looking at the A1C. And the A1C has been pretty much the gold standard for how we gauge if your diabetes is well controlled. So in the realm for glucose, not even close. Manjaro is a lot better than semaglutide and that's just the way it is. There are choices, there are times and I would pick I would pick semaglutide if the A1C is closer to the goal and I'm wanting to avoid hypoglycemia, but that's not very often. Given the choice, Manjaro wins that round. For weight loss, it's another one. Manjaro pretty much wins, but why would I choose semaglutide in this case? If Manjaro can cause an 18% decrease in weight loss by the trials that we've seen at 72 weeks versus semaglutide showing a 12% a weight loss generally at its highest dose over a 72 week period or 100 week period. Why would we choose semaglutide versus Munjaro? Well, especially when I'm doing our consultations here, I take a look at the patient and what their BMI is. A higher BMI and a longer way to go would probably necessitate a bigger medication, a bigger a bigger response. That patient, I probably would recommend terzipatide slash Munjaro to get to our goal. Semaglutide, which can do the same thing over a longer period of time, 18% um, uh, weight loss can be attained if we stay on it long enough, but that's not really our goal here. Our goal here is to promote lifestyle changes. So we'll do smaller chunks with the semaglutide over a bit of a period of time, about four to five months max, which gives our patient enough time to change their lifestyle versus Manjaro, which can take bigger chunks, but if the patient's BMI is higher, it's going to take just as long. It'll take four months to get to where we need to go, but the Manjaro is doing the job a lot faster than semaglutide would. But then again, four months to give patients time to change their lifestyle, change their relationship with food, form a team, have someone who's gonna keep them accountable, form a new relationship with food that's going to be sustainable beyond the four to five months that I expect the patients to be on the medication. Do sometimes patients need more time? Yeah, and that's okay. Semaglutide is probably that medication for a patient who wants to be on, who needs to be on it for a long, lot longer. I do choose uh, Manjaro in cases when I have patients who have a lot more weight that they wanna lose because 
it's just going to be more effective over that period of time that I expect them to be on the medication and get them to the goal. Another consideration of Manjaro versus semaglutide that you that everyone thinks about. How much is this going to cost me, doc? This is very interesting. This these numbers fluctuate based on the market and what's available. Right now we know both of these medications are on shortage, which is kind of made them both very popular, which is made them more in shortage. But I think what we need to look at is the regional pricing. Here in South Florida right now, um, the Manjaro is actually less expensive, maybe about $100 to $200 a month versus the Ozempic. So Ozempic is retailing about $1,200 to $1,300 a month, more to thirteen, to be honest with you. $1,300 a month for your, for your Ozempic and about $1,000 to $1,100 a month for Tozipatide slash Manjaro. That's a significant amount of money, $200 a month um, for the time that patients need to be on it for five, maybe six months. You're talking about, you know, $1,200 difference between the two here in South Florida. I ran across a study though, and they actually broke it down to how much it would cost 1% on each one of the medications. $985 to drop one percentage of your body weight on Manjaro and $1,845 to drop one percentage point on Ozempic. If you have to pay retail, if you gotta buy the, um, the, the medications from the manufacturer, it probably makes more sense, no, it definitely makes more sense, Manjaro, to use Manjaro versus Ozempic to control your diabetes or to lose weight. It just doesn't make sense to pay double to drop the one percentage point or to get the, the, the glucose benefits that you'll get um, from the Manjaro. That's just another clear win for Manjaro. Availability, who's available? Who's out here? Who's, who's, who's ready for us to use? That one's a draw. Right now in the retail space, in your big box pharmacies, it's a struggle to get both Manjaro, to get either, Manjaro or in any form. Um, the, all the dosages are pretty much not available right now. So that's a wash. Manjaro versus Ozempic. Availability, mm, right now not so good. We've been told recently that this shortage is going to last through 2024 and likely go into part of 2025. No idea why this shortage is happening. They Neither manufacturer has really explained what is going on. Um, I have my ideas, but I don't want to speculate. <laughs> Um, as to what is going on, but it's it seems to be it seems to be it's it's kind of weird to be honest with you. Billion dollar companies can't scale up, and this medication is sorely sorely needed. But at every turn and every time they they get in front of a camera, they are they're explaining as to no reason. We can't really tell us why the medications aren't going to be on hand for the foreseeable future. So um, availability, that's clearly a wash. Now we're getting into some of the stuff that semaglutide happens to shine. Cardiovascular protection. Not to say that Manjaro doesn't have cardio protection or you know cardiovascular protection, but it's not been proven yet. And semaglutide does have studies out there that shows they ha it has a clear cardio protection. And actually it is now approved for cardio protective um, indications, meaning protecting the heart from you know cardiac events, to be honest with you. Obesity comes with cardiovascular events, so does diabetes. But the protection that we see with semaglutide slash Ozempic slash Wagovi is independent of obesity and independent of uh, weight loss. It only enhances in patients who have, you know, another issue going on that seems to cause heart disease. And obesity is that, and so is diabetes. Diabetes is basically, when you have diabetes, you basically have heart disease. That's what we're taught in the medical space. Cardio protection, proven cardio protection by clinical trials is on the side of semaglutide. So what I'm trying to say is if I have a patient in front of me who is obese and diabetic, and I pretty much feel as though they have these issues and they're in front of me for weight loss, let's say, I'm probably gonna recommend semaglutide just because I know the tr clinical trials are there. I will say this, Manjaro is being um, evaluated for this indication and I'm pretty sure it's gonna fit the bill. It won't be long before Manjaro gains that indication for cardio protection. Right now, semaglutide wins that round. Tolerability. If I give you the medication and it's making you lose weight, trolling your diabetes, but it makes you super sick, you're not gonna wanna take it no matter how much it's making you, your, your how much is improving your labs. In that respect, Manjaro tends to cause 
more side effects. The side effects that are most common are the GI ones. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Not fun at all when they do happen. It's not like they happen that much, but they do happen a lot more with Manjaro versus semaglutide. I think that has to do with the fact that the Manjaro has this cheat code in, in, built in, and it has two receptors that it's, it's, it's hitting, which kind of makes it more effective at controlling blood glucose, and it makes it more effective at losing weight. I believe it's, that's part of the reason why it also is, has more propensity to cause you to have, or cause patients to have issues with nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So yeah, if I have a patient, who's maybe a little bit older, and I'm concerned about the possibility for the side effects to come in, probably gonna to go towards semaglutide, go low and slow, versus a younger patient who, pretty solid, and I we can try out the Manjaro to see if they get any side effects to get them to a good dose. Semaglutide is gonna be better. Younger patients, we can try it, but if it does show up, I recommend we switch over to semaglutide. Semaglutide wins in a side effect department. Low and slow usually works, nobody likes side effects. Okay, mechanism of action. This one's a bit unfair from the jump, but since they live in the same um, class or drug, drug class, GLP-1 agonists, we're gonna go ahead and put them head to head on mechanism of action, even though it's not really fair. And the reason it's not fair is because terzipatide has that ace in a hole I told you about, has GLP-1 agonist activity, and it also has GIP. And combining those two activities, I think is what makes it a lot more effective at controlling blood sugar, and controlling your weight. Semaglutide, great medication, way better than the first generation medications that we had in this class, like exenatide being one of them, del delaglutide, which is of uh, trulicity. Semaglutide is a lot better at controlling blood glucose and also causing weight loss, but not as strong and not as good as um, terzipatide. And that, I believe, is because of the fact that semaglutide is a pure GLP-1 agonist, no extras, um, no extra receptors, no help, no synergy, no double whammy, none of the good stuff that Manjaro has. Semaglutide lo loses that round. But on a technicality, gotta stand up for semaglutide. We don't have any head-to-head -head trials, but there are some brewing in the background where we're going to see increasing doses of the semaglutide versus increasing doses of Manjaro. Semaglutide being Arozempic and Manjaro being Artrozepatide. But there's one other drug that I'd like to bring in for Royal Rumble. He's new on the block and still being tested. Uh, it's in a phase two trial right now and probably won't be ready in the market until 2026. And that is Ritatratide. Ritatratide is a triple whammy. I expect this medication to be even Manjaro by 2026 if it can go through the trials and not cause excessive um, side effects or anything else that we haven't seen yet with um, Monjaro or semaglutide. Increasing side effects, yes, we have seen. Semaglutide, a little bit more with Monjaro, and hopefully a not a lot more with, with tetratide. With tetratide. Remind me to call the pharmacies, the pharmacists, and talk to them about why they make these medications so hard to say. That's a different video. But anyway, this one, we're gonna talk about <laughs> with tetratide. And ritatratide has GLP, it has a glucagon receptor um, activity. So those three whammies, those three synergistic receptors in the body that have insulin um, production, control, um, control blood glucose, and also can control hunger from three different angles. In the phase two trials, it's doing great things. Um, very early, but we have a lot of high hopes for that medication. With that being said, when I'm sitting in front of a patient at the end of the consultation, when they ask me, like just today, as I was seeing my, my 65 year old female patient, and at the end, she asked me, hey doc, which is the best medication? I almost never answer that question directly because the answer is always going to be Man Man Manjaro slash to Zipatide. The better question is, which is the best medication for me? And that's an individualized choice, patient per patient. Looking at their age, looking at their goals for weight loss, looking at any indications for prediabetes if they have it, looking at their propensity for issues with GI issues, if they have um, constipation at baseline, if they have history, history of GERD at baseline, which is reflux, which can promote some nausea. I look for any issues that they may have with this specific medication and how long 
they need, they will probably need in order to get to their lifestyle modification goals along with their weight loss goals or diabetes goals and make the choice from there. Sometimes that choice or the recommendation is semaglutide slash Ozempic. And sometimes that choice is terzipatide slash Manjaro. It's an individualized choice. And the best question again is to ask which one of these medications are best for me. With that being said, Manjaro does win the fight of Godzilla versus King Kong. I don't know who's who, uh, but that's if you ask the strict question, which one of these medications are better? From what the information we have now, Manjaro is uh, is the, the leader of the pack. He is the, the king of the mountain of the GLP-1 Agnes, where Tetratide may take that crown in about 2026 if the clinical trials continue as they have been um, early on. Like I said, only in phase two has a bit of a way to go. If you have any questions, uh, leave them down below in the comment section. Or soon enough, you'd like to get on our um, coaching. We are gonna start some, or I'm gonna start some coaching um, for patients who are already on GLP-1 agonist or are about to start their GLP-1 agonist journey and maybe feel they need some coaching through some of the side effects, some of the things they should eat, maybe some of the workouts they should do, um, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. Lots of the stuff that I talk about in our videos here you can go ahead and um, hit the link below. I'm um, gonna leave it down below so you can go ahead and get on our waiting list. We're gonna get that going very, very soon. All right now, see you soon.